Okay, so I, I'm I'm gonna talk about reproducible integration testing in Mir. Uh, I'm Sergey Fedorov from Consensus Lab, one of the developers of Mir framework. And let me just quickly recap for completeness that the Mir is a framework to implement distributed protocols, focus on with focus on consensus protocols. It's made modular and flexible. You can find it here. GitHub, and it's a part of Consensus Labs Y3 project, which is also called Scalable Consensus. So the general architecture of Mir is uh, event-centric. Uh, so there are different modules that can produce and consume events, and basically uh, the node operates by dispatching events from from source to destination modules. And as any software, we would like to ensure uh, its stability and correctness by uh, proper testing. And uh, with uh, distributed protocols, and I think especially with consensus protocols, it's particularly uh, difficult. And uh, the consensus protocol is a critical part of any blockchain or uh, distributed system that uses that. So our goals with uh, when we do integration testing is to ensure stability against uh, different kinds of uh, failure, like uh, crashes, sorry, crashes, network partitioning, Byzantine failure, and we would also like to catch some implementation bugs. When we think about integration testing of a consensus protocol. It appears a good idea to have uh, such testing at deterministic, so that uh, if we get a, failure, a test failure in CI, then we can take uh, some kind of random seed and reproduce the test exactly, uh, the failure exactly, uh, so that we can debug it step by step. So to achieve that, we need to control uh, concurrency in the node and between the nodes. And we also would like to uh, to explore different schedules of execution so that we use pseudo-random uh, schedule, uh, the ability to run pseudo-random schedules so that we can catch different bugs. What prevents us from uh, achieving uh, reproducibility. So it's a uh, different kind of inherent sources of non-determinism. So this, this, the sources of non-determinism in our case is mostly communication between nodes over the network. It can come because of unpredictable message delays or unreliable message delivery or out of order message delivery. And uh, as well as communication between nodes, uh, we can also have uh, non-determinism within a node because uh, our uh, event dispatching between modules happens concurrently and we also have a local clock in each node that can fire timeouts so that is also non-deterministic and when I'm talking about integration testing I, I talk about a scenario where all nodes run on the same machine within even within the same process so it's kind of uh, they don't really have to communicate through network. They can communicate with some uh, stub. But nevertheless, uh, when we run several nodes, uh, we need to run them concurrently. And that concurrency gives us non-determinism that we want to uh, control. So how, how uh, we can uh, control that non-determinism? Uh, so our first trial and a step towards that is introducing a simulation engine uh, that uh, I recently implemented within the Mir framework. So uh, the, the core of this engine is the runtime. It uh, counts simulated time. So it simulates uh, time. Uh, it counts log logical time and uh, it executes actions that are scheduled uh, at specific points in this simulated time. 
so we can uh, uh, the, so the simulation the runtime knows at which instant of time any each action should happen and the ha the, the action itself happens as it were uh, instantaneous and uh, this runtime uh, it functions such that it executes all uh, the, the action sh scheduled at the next uh, well, it it executes the the shed, the next scheduled action in the in the simulated timeline, and it waits until that scheduled action is complete, and then it knows that there is nothing more to execute at this time, and it can proceed to execute the next action scheduled uh, in the virtual time. It may be scheduled in two hours of virtual time, but uh, in our simulation, it happens to, as the next step immediately. This, this runtime has a notion of processes that can help us to control uh, concurrency. And uh, so it represents running actions within the runtime. So whenever an, an action uh, is executed, that is bound to a process that uh, becomes a runnable. It executes some code and then it should go to, uh, to, to block on some operation or sleep uh, in virtual time, sleep in virtual time, so that uh, the action is complete and then the runtime can uh, proceed to the next action, to the next scheduled action. So processes can also spawn new active processes. Uh, they can virtually fork, like one process can spawn a new process and then both are active. And uh, until they both go to sleep, or block uh, the the simulation runtime doesn't execute the next action, and they can also synchronize and, and communicate with each other, and that is achieved by means of channels. This is the mechanism to synchronize and communicate values between processes. Right. So, how does it help to run mirror nodes uh, uh, in, in reproducible integration testing? Is that we wrap all modules uh, of a no of a mirror node, and we run uh, unmodified node core, and also unmodified modules code. But we wrap modules so that we can get control of uh, module execution and event dispatching. So in our case, uh, handling of each event uh, it happens as if it was instantaneous. But we can also introduce some uh, delays in virtual time, uh, so the random delays in virtual time to simulate uh, modules uh, taking more time to execute. And since modules do not communicate, are not supposed to communicate with each other directly, only through the node, through the mirror node, through the core, that is perfectly fine because we have full control over event dispatching, and therefore we can schedule module or modules uh, running uh, uh, with our simulation framework. The execution of modules, it's uh, reflected as a simulation processes, those processes that, uh, that were mentioned in the previous slide, right? And uh, we, tra we track events that come out of the modules that are generated by the modules and that are consumed by the modules so that we know exactly what to expect from the from the module from from the core we know how how it dispatches events and then we uh, control concurrency through the simulation uh, runtime and we have to provide two substitutes before i mentioned that modules are not modified but uh, with two exceptions, one module is transport, which implements communication between nodes. And we provide a substitute for that module called sim transport that, uh, that uh, implements communication with the simulation channels instead of real network or Golang normal channels. And so that we can control messages passing between nodes uh, as well as the events uh, in each node. And uh, 
we also have a substitute for a local timer because obviously we, we cannot use real uh, system timer uh, if we run a simulated time. We also have to use the simulated time. And this, uh, since uh, MIR, in MIR, any uh, modules are not supposed to use system uh, timer directly, but instead they emit events targeting a timer module that can uh, install timers and uh, send back a specified event when the timer fires. And we provide an implementation, a substitute for this timer module that is connected to the simulation and uh, basically utilizes uh, the simulated simulation runtime uh, to implement this timer with uh, the virtual time. And the implementation of these parts that are specific to MIR are located here in package deploy test. But the simulation engine itself is located in package test team. It's not really so coupled with MIR. It's kind of independent, right? And this, this uh, Mere specific stuff. It uses the simulation runtime uh, to me to 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 work. Right. So this is the code, and I would just run two two integration tests, a number four and number fifteen. And the difference is that the number four uses real time, and number fifteen uses virtual time. So the test runs. And in the end, we will see uh, the difference in how much time does it take. So the number four, it's with real time, it takes 20 seconds because it has to wait all the timeouts. It has to wait all the uh, things in real time. And number 15 is the simulation time and it runs significantly faster. So it's good in CI and also it does not depend on this, uh, on how fast is the virtual machine running the test. We had some failures because uh, GitHub virtual machine in CI, it was sometimes a bit too slow. So real time doesn't really work reliably there. Whereas simulated time is just doesn't matter. It, uh, it simulates time. That That's all what I wanted to show. Thank um, you. 